The Open Championship returns to Royal Lytham and St Anne's in July for the first time since 2001. The venue is widely regarded as one of the most testing on the open rotor and has been the scene of several iconic moments in golf's oldest championship. So before Lytham crowns another champion, we thought we'd look back at our top 10 favorite stories from championships played out on the Lancashire Links. We begin our countdown at Lytham's first ever Open, back in 1926. Bobby Jones, the sensational young American amateur, was the star name in the field. He'd already won the US Open. With five holes to play, he trailed fellow American Al Watrous by two shots, but finished strongly to win the title by two. He went on to win the Open twice more and also claim the amateur championship. It was another 70 years before Lytham crowned its next American champion. PGA Tour journeyman Tom Lehman would be the man who ended the drought, thanks in no small part to a fantastic third round 65, which handed him a five-shot lead heading into the final day. And on Sunday, Lehman would struggle with the pressure of closing out his first major win. But this shot at the par 312 would prove the pivotal moment, as he ended a run of poor holes with a birdie to restore his lead to two shots, an advantage he would maintain all the way to the 72nd hole. South African great Bobby Locke would be Lytham's second Open champion in 1952, as he overcame Australia's Peter Thompson and Ireland's Fred Daly. Locke's third Open victory was, though, nearly denied him, when on the morning of the final day, he couldn't get his clubs out of his locked car. He was staying at a hotel in Blackpool and had locked his clubs up in his car, came and he was playing at 8.50 the next morning, the two rounds in the day again, went to the garage and it was locked. Uh, they discovered that the man who had the keys was some distance away and he had to hail down a milk float, give the driver ten shillings, get the garage unlocked and rush onto the first tee. He didn't even have time for a practice swing, topped his shot, hopped the bunkers 40 yards short of the green and got onto the front edge. And then he knocked it in for a two, on he went. Lock trailed daily by four shots after 36 holes but his characteristic unflappability would see him card rounds of 74 and 73 to claim the third of his four Open titles. The 1963 Open at Lytham would provide one of the most absorbing playoffs in the championship's history. The two protagonists were opposites in every respect. Bob Charles, the tall, thin New Zealander, was quiet and undemonstrative. His opponent, the short, solidly built ex-US Marine Phil Rogers, was a latter-day showman. In the 36-hole playoff, Charles' silky smooth putting stroke would prove the difference as he purred to an eight-stroke victory. Well, I know I had a great week on the greens. Of course, you've still got to hit shots off the tee and onto the green to, uh, to get there to putt. And uh, so I had a, had a good week and uh, I was playing uh, as well as I've ever played in my life. The win made Charles the first and to date the only left-hander to lift the claret jug. A creditable mention on our list goes to Tiger Woods, who won the silver medal as the leading amateur at Lytham in 1996 a year before winning his first major title at the Masters by an incredible 12-shot margin. However, number six on our countdown is Ian Woosnam's dramatic challenge at the 2001 Open. The Welshman shared the lead going into the final day with Bernhard Langer and David Duval and would make a brilliant start to the final day with this approach to the par three first. However, disaster was just around the corner. On the second tee, Woosnam would discover that he had one too many clubs in his bag, costing him a crucial two-shot penalty. God, I'll give you a job to do and you can't do it. You're on At that moment, I just felt like I'd been kicked in the teeth and it's hard enough to give a, be level with some of the best players in the world playing, or the best players in the world, and 
to give him a two-shot advantage. wasn't uh, I wasn't feeling too enthusiastic about it. It's the biggest mistake he'll make in his life. He won't do it again. And he's a good caddy. That's all I can say. The 1989 Masters champion would miss out on the Open title he so desperately wanted by four shots as he finished in a tie for third. Woosnam's misfortune back in 2001 would play into the hands of America's David Duval. The man from Jacksonville, Florida, was the picture of calm on a final day full of drama. At the start of play, the leaderboard was tight to say the least, with 13 players within a shot of each other and another six a further stroke behind. Duval's immaculate final round 67, though, would see him beat closest challenger Nicholas Fast by three shots and make him the worthy champion golfer of 2001. How you doing? The 1988 Open would see the very first Monday finish in the championship's history and would provide a tussle for the title between Seve Ballesteros and Nick Price. What I remember so well about 1988 was Seve and I separated ourselves from the field in the middle of the, of the uh, front nine, and we could tell between one of us that we, we, one of us is going to have to play great to beat the other. Price, the younger man, did play some fantastic golf as he looked to shake off by Asteros, but this duel was going the distance. It was a punch and counterpunch for the whole way around that back nine. And when you do that and you separate yourself from the rest of the field, um, it's, uh, it's indescribable. It's very hard to put into words other than you get such a kick out of playing so well. Price eventually signed for a closing 69, but on this occasion, it wasn't enough to deny an inspired by Asteros. On his way to a 65 and a two-shot win, the Spaniard would provide one final reminder of his mastery at the 18th. A third and final open success was complete. I mean, winning the Open is difficult for the first time. Winning for the second time is difficult. But winning three times, I don't think there's any, any luck or any coincidence. It's, it's, it's something more on, on the top of that, don't you think? <laughs> Nineteen sixty nine would see the emergence of a bright new face of British golf in the shape of Tony Jacklin. And at Lytham that year, the colourful Englishman held a two shot lead after three rounds. The overall thought process was just stay close in the hunt and it might be your day. On the morning of the final round, Jacklin found a note from a friend and fellow pro, Bert Yancey, in his locker. It simply read Tempo. Jacqueline went on to hold his nerve and his rhythm to become the first homegrown winner of the Open in 18 years. That inspiration that you need was given to me really through the galleries. I could feel it, you know, I could feel that people cared. I haven't had a chance for it to sink in yet. All I know is I'm, I've never been happier in my whole life. Lytham's list of international winners was added to in 1974 when Gary Player became the only man alongside Harry Varden to win Open titles in three separate decades. He led wire to wire but faced blustery conditions on the final day. I had a six-shot lead going into the 71st hole, hit the ball in long rough. Well, even if I didn't find it, I would have still won it quite easily. Player somehow chops the ball out of the thick greenside rough and escaped with a bogey, but the drama wasn't over. I said to my caddy, I said, do you think we can win from here? And he was this tall black gentleman, Rabbit, who'd caddied for the first time in Britain. Oh, he says, even Ray Charles can win from here. <laughs> After escaping from the 17th with a fortunate bogey, player would see his approach to the final green, finish next to Lytham's famous Victorian clubhouse. What followed, was the staff of open folklore. Can I have a rules man, please? No. I don't have to play that. Does he know? He takes a drop with one shot, isn't it? He takes a drop. Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to take a drop if I don't have to. 
Could you just hold it a minute, please? What Player would produce next would go down as a moment of genius. I learned when I was very young is that uh, is somehow you have to put the ball in the hole as quick as possible and, uh, and no as a matter how just 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 do it after finishing second at Birkdale in 1976 Sevi Ballesteros would come of age three years later at Lytham at the 16th hole if, if I was going to miss the uh, one side it was, it was going to be on the right side the shot wasn't that that bad to the right. I mean, uh, it becomes very, very popular because it ended up uh, under one of the cars, but uh, it wasn't that bad. That year, Seve was scruffy but spectacular. Offline, yet outstanding. During the final round, he used his driver nine times and hit just one fairway. But at the 16th, his wedge play and putting underlined just how good and gutsy he was. A 30-footer for birdie would move Seve towards an unlikely victory and seal his place in the hearts and minds of the golfing public across the world. Winning the first time is always the one you always keep in, in your mind. And I remember I have the, uh, my three brothers there, and, and it was a very, very special, very special moment. Savvy may not be at Royal Lytham this year, but the memories of his two magical wins means his spirit lives on. And if the old age adage is true that the quality of a course can be judged by the calibre of its winners and the way they won, then Royal Lytham and St Anne's is right up there with the very best.